morning, Adrian Tolpa, um, currently the acting commander for the Riverina Police District. Um, I can expand on uh, what has already been articulated here this morning uh, concerning the, the border operation which the New South Wales Police Force is heavily invested into. Um, look, it's been almost two weeks now since this operation has been underway um, and from as far as we're concerned it's been a tremendous success. Um, thus far we've had in the vicinity of 300,000 motor vehicles pass through um, our checkpoints which range from obviously the very far south coast of New South Wales stretching across towards um, the Barrier Police District um, towards South Australia. So look that's a huge operation. Um, we've turned around in the vicinity of 380 motor vehicles uh, since the commence commencement of this operation. And by and large, uh, the community has responded very, very positive um, to all of the checkpoints. Uh, the police have been obviously working very closely with all of the border towns uh, between Victoria and New South Wales, and we will continue to do that. Um, what we ask the community to please understand, uh, this is a huge operation currently underway, to please expect delays. Uh, we certainly recommend that you avoid travelling during the peak times, both in the morning and towards the, towards the evening. Um, that is where we are seeing our, our delays increase, but um, rest assured that we are working tirelessly, tirelessly um, to improve the efficiency of these checkpoints. Um, as has been articulated here today, as of midnight last night, some very important changes were made to the permit system. And I, I do recommend uh, if you are looking to enter New South Wales, you must go to buy the New South Wales service website and acquire a permit. Uh, a number of permits are now available in the vicinity of 20 uh, permits for a variety of factors to enter New South Wales. But what I can rest assured is that you, if you do not have a permit, you will be turned around by the police. Um, so please work with us. We have seen just this morning a number of people approach our checkpoints across New South Wales with permits that are now expired. They expired at 11.59 last night. However, I can assure you that New South Wales Police Force, we've been working with those motorists um, to the point where those motorists weren't entirely turned away. We are able to facilitate those permits at the actual checkpoints. And once they've acquired those through the website, they are able to proceed into New South Wales. Um, in terms of our local communities, once again, I'll iterate the fact that please, for those patrons who are attending coffee shops or pubs, restaurants or clubs, please understand that there are restrictions in place. Please understand that you must work with uh, the employees of those locations. So if they ask you to be seated, please oblige, because obviously the New South Wales Police are heavily invested into ensuring compliance around uh, our places in the community where there's social gatherings. So, so far uh, in the Murrumbidgee area, um, we're very pleased with the, with the work that we've done with our employers, with our licensed venues. Um, by and large, it's been a very cooperative relationship, but please um, don't mistake that for the fact that if we do identify breaches uh, early on in the piece that we were uh, issuing a number of warnings, but that, uh, that mantra has now changed to enforcement. So you can expect that if you do breach these health orders that you can expect that the police force will take action. The fines are significant and uh, we will continue to enforce those conditions if need be. Does anyone have any questions? Um, just on the sporting uh, arrangements this weekend, we obviously had return to senior sport and some junior sport this weekend. Will the police take a role in, in ensuring compliance at those events? Yeah, look, unfortunately, we, it, it, it's, there's so much for us to do at the moment. And um, obviously sporting, the return of sport is a huge factor in our communities. And look, we recognise the benefits of sport, um, but look, we have been in the last couple of weeks working with sporting clubs, um, preparing for, for, for this launch. So um, look, you can expect to see police, police around. And look, what we are trying to do at the moment is really increase our presence uh, in the community. Um, it's, we're heavily resourced to do so, so um, we will be, uh, will we be turning up and standing on the sidelines and checking what the kids are doing? The answer to that is no, some common sense must prevail. But 
Uh, you can rest assured in the background, background we are working with the sporting clubs. More broadly, how, how do you monitor compliance on this sort of thing? Um, I know in the past you have said you're not just going to pull over every Victorian number of plates that's seen on the road, but I think, yeah, how, how do you manage that now, um, given the tighter restrictions? Look, we, we are, you know, in, in many senses, as good as the information that we get, and we rely heavily upon the public. Uh, here in the Riverina, I can, I can speak for that we do have a number of phone calls coming in each day about potential breaches, whether it be at shopping complexes, uh, licensed venues, or people failing to self-isolate, and we act on that information. So um, we always plead to the public out there. Um, we always work with the community, and to please, if you do suspect that someone is in breach of the health orders, to please contact your local police or Crime Stoppers. Many people coming across the border. Do we have many people in the Riverina Police District that you are door knocking on to check if they are complying with the self-isolation? Yeah, we do. We do. And um, look, that list is um, very well coordinated, um, and every day that is updated. So we do have a number of people in the Riverina who are currently in isolation, having travelled from Victoria. Um, and those people, and anyone in the future, you can expect. Um, whether it be day or night, we don't schedule in when we're going to come and visit, but we will be doing random checks to ensure that compliance. And like I referred to earlier, if we do detect someone who is meant to be in isolation, who is out in the community, we will take action. Since the border came into effect, have there been, has there been anyone in the Riverina that hasn't been at home when you have been doing one of those checks? Obviously, this is generally been through Look, we are following up a particular check from overnight in the River Arena where an individual is under an isolation order. Um, that person wasn't located at the time, so this morning we are following that up. Adrian, you mentioned before the, um, the changes to the permit system is creating some, some headaches, not just for motorists, but for police as well. You've got, um, I guess, a more detailed um, list to go down and, and therefore it's slowing up those checkpoints. Can you run us through that? Yeah, you look, you look, you must understand that um, there's a lot of pressure on those police on the, on the, on the front line here. Um, there's a wealth of information coming at them and what we must do is ensure that they are very well versed in the change of legislation which occurred overnight and for some that was midway through their shift. So look, what we are experiencing this morning, there is some delay. Um, obviously the police on the front line are now experiencing a different uh, permit. So. Look, they're being very thorough and very meticulous about ensuring that the particulars and the person's intended travel um, line up with the permit. So, look, there is there is delays, um, but uh, look, we hope that as the day um, uh, plays out, that that efficiency will will improve. Have you got an idea of how many people might have been turned around this morning because they hadn't updated their permit? No, I don't have a specific number. Um, but I, I, I could say that a number of people did turn up with permits that were, were um, relevant yesterday, but no longer relevant today. And yeah, have you been hearing anything about how people are feeling? Are there frustrations or are people mostly understanding? No, I, I, I think it's fair to say that 99% um, of the public are, are working with the police. They understand um, the restrictions and they're complying. Um, there has been very, very few, when you're talking about 300,000 motor vehicles in the space of a couple of weeks, it is a, a very, very small number of those who have caused us any issues at our checkpoints and or not worked alongside and with us. Sounds like there's a lot for police to stay on top of. Is it going to be possible for police to stay on top of all this? Yeah, look, our police are very well briefed. Um, there is a, a wealth of information out there. As you can see, there's now 20 permits. Um, in place which took effect as of midnight last night. But look, we can rest assured, and that's one of the thing um, that we've made sure this morning is that the police are taking their time and that's why you are seeing more delays today than you did yesterday because police are taking that time. They're very meticulous about what they're doing, but we expect as they become more familiar with the process, more familiar with the permits, that that, that will improve the time spent in the, in the line. Yeah, can we get yeah, Jill or... <laughs> 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 <laughs>